Hello, 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 hello everybody. Good to see you. This is Charlie Newton here again with Splash and we're going to do a live studio uh, art feed. We're going to paint a picture live. As you can see, I have my mask on and um, I just want to remind kids and, and parents to wear your masks. Uh, the mayor said that last week we had 600 cases in Chattanooga. 600 cases of uh, the coronavirus and uh, this year we had over 50 people to die right here in our city so we want to protect grandma and grandpa uncle auntie and there have been children who have passed away as well so let's get rid of this virus so mask up but when you are at home or by yourself you can take your mask off I, you know, I miss the live art classes when you come here and, and I teach you art, but uh, that's okay. I'm thankful for our live feed. So today we're going to draw some butterflies and I think we're going to paint too. So you're going to need your watercolors and you're going to need a jar of water and uh, your pencil. So we may paint several butterflies. We're going to first start off painting simple pictures. And if we have time, we're going to do something a little bit more complex. But if we can't get to the complex butterfly today, we'll do it on Thursday, same time. Okay, let's start. So first you need your pencil, a 4B. Let's use a 4B pencil. And think of this class as practice, okay? We're going, I'm going to show you first the simple way, the quick and dirty way uh, to paint butterflies, to draw and paint butterflies. And kids five years old and up can do this simple way. So I'm just going to pick out a few butterflies. I don't know the name of these butterflies. So the first one we're going to do, we're going to, first we're going to draw a half circle, a straight line straight across. It's like a half circle. Let's do these large so that it'll be easier. You see that? I need a lot of space here. Now draw a straight line down the center. Don't draw it too heavy though. I don't, we don't need your mark to be that heavy like this. Then we're going to do another half circle to make this a double line. We're going to follow this line. And this is going to be, this area is going to be where the markings of the butterfly is going to be. Can you see that? Like two half circles. We're going to paint it later. So remember sketch, we sketch. Do not press down hard with the pencil. Once you learn how to sketch, I'm, I promise you, your drawings are going to get much better. Now the butterfly is going to have, we're going to draw the butterfly's body and the body is going to start at the top of this straight line here. And it's going to go down, it's going to have two sections. So we're going to draw an oval here, leaving a little space between this first half circle. Now the second part of the butterfly's body is going to be another oval that's going to kind of come to a point. It's going to flare out and come, it's going to come to a point just below the half circle. Then we're going to draw the butterfly's head, which is going to be a, a circle. We're going to break up these smooth lines when we paint it. The lines are going to be jagged, like butterfly wings. But it's, it's kind of like, you ever see a moth 
this butterfly that we are painting is going to look kind of like a moth. Then we're going to put one antenna to, to go out this way with a little dot on the end and another antenna to go out to the left with a dot on the end. Now, these are very, how should I say, classical or classic uh, I don't know if that's a good word, but um, they're going to look really good for decoration. So first we need gray. So we don't have gray paint. And what you can do is you can dip your brush in your water, put a little black on your brush, and over here in your tray, I hope they can see that. Can they see that, Ianta? Yes. Okay. You see, I'm putting water, more water uh, in, in my black. It's hard to see, but the black is uh, really shrinking because I have a lot of water in it. Yeah. And I, I just want to paint inside this uh, first half circle some streaks of, of gray. Watch how I do it. Oh, well, it's too dark, so I put more water on my brush, and I'm going to just to move this around some. I want it to be gray. It's gray. So if yours seem to be a little dark, it's okay. It's still going to work. But I, I want it to look gray. Then I also want you to, now the more water you use, the more water you put in your brush, the thinner your paint is going to be, and it's going to look gray. Let's paint the, the head and the body gray. Not black, but gray. I still have too much black in my paint. I think it's this brush. This is not really a watercolor brush, so I'm going to change brushes. I'm going to put this brush in the studio. So I, this is really an acrylic brush. So I'll put that brush aside and get another brush. I'm going to get a large round brush. And this brush is a little bit softer. Well, I think I'll use this one. Now we're still using gray. If it's too black, then um, uh, you're going to um, have some problems. So now we're just going to make some marks in this part of the um, butterfly wing. Remember, we don't lose the drawing. You should still see your drawing. We're going to trace these lines in the end. Just put some little marks like this. See the little hash marks? This is what we call hash marks. Or you think of them as little dots. We're going to add some purple to this in just a minute. Now, we're going to paint this part of the wing with gray, but we're going to make some wavy lines like that. See that wavy? Okay, so watch how I'm going to do it. This half circle, just put some wavy lines on there. That was, uh, to me, that wing makes it look more like a moth. Now just to give this a little bit more uh, volume, we're going to use some purple. I don't want the purple to be too thick either. Now, painting these, look at the marks I make. Make your marks the same way I make mine, okay? So I'm going to do some straight lines like this. 
going straight out like that with purple on the other side too maybe three lines and then on some of these dark um, mark markings paint some of them purple don't paint all of them purple you can even put a, a little purple on your wings it's okay so when you do this on your own you know you just sort of you want to paint these very loose now I want you to use your small round brush a lot of times we draw with our small brush and that's what you're gonna do we're going to trace uh, your lines if you have a hair dryer you can dry your picture we're going to do another butterfly we're going to do we're going to do several we're just practicing now these could be if you if you was uh, going to design something for your mother uh, these are great for designs for say for instance uh, cloth or tablecloths or what have you because it's a simple way to draw a butterfly now we're going to go back and use black and we're going to trace with black so this time the paint don't need to be thin so you don't want a lot of water in your brush you want thick paint you're going to use the tip of your brush I want you kids to learn how to not press down so hard with your brush uh, we're not writing and we are not coloring with crayons see when you color with crayons you have to press down kind of hard to get the color out when you're writing without thinking you grip your uh, pencil really tight and you write so when making when making art you want to relax so this this is the key lesson to learn today relax and have fun whenever we are making art we are always discovering we are always experimenting we don't know what it's going to look like we're searching for the art we're searching for the butterfly okay so we're using our minds, it's right brain thinking. We're using part of our brain that we don't normally use during the course of a day. So it's, 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 it's different than uh, the part of your brain that you use to do math or to write uh, you know, a sentence. So right brain thinking is your creative side. So remember to relax. If you feel tension in your shoulders, no, just relax. Make sure your paper is straight and even and not turned. Don't have your face close to the paper. <laughs> you know, all these things make you tense up. You want to relax. And if you relax, uh, most of the time, you can uh, make some really nice lines, thin lines, and you'll have more control. So first, I'm going to draw the, uh, the antenna. I'm going to use my pinky finger as a brace my brush is turned up my brush is not on the side I want to use the tip of my brush my brush is not on the side it's almost straight up and down and when I begin to draw the line you can't if you draw too slow it won't be smooth so what I'm going to do first is tap it for the dot then I'm just going to trace my pencil line watch it watch how I do it If I draw too slow, I cannot make a smooth line. Just use the tip of the brush. Keep the brush at the same uh, pressure. Now, this, these two lines we just did are the lines that need to be, you need the most control. The rest of these lines, you don't have to have as much control with it. Okay, I'm going to dip my brush in the water. Now I'm going to draw the body. So I'm just going to trace my pencil lines. Just tracing my line. This is a, 
this part don't have to be as perfect. Make, matter of fact, you can make it a little wavy. See how I made this part of the body more wavy? Now I'm gonna draw some curved lines on the left-hand side to make, make it look like the butterfly's body is round. Now you can add more things to yours than, than I do mine. It's okay. So now what I'm going to do is trace these wings, but I want th your lines to be more uh, expressive. I want your lines to flow. I want it to curve. Look how I'm going to do this wing. I'm going. I'll show you on th the side how I'm going to do this line. I'm going to curve up and then go across like that. These lines don't have to be perfect. These these lines can disappear. You just want the paint to be darker than the gray. Okay, so this side of the wing is going to curve out like that. See, if it's too perfect, it won't look like it's a real creature. Then I'm going to trace these lines down here. I'm, going to, I'm not going to trace every line. I, I just need an indication. See, I put more water in my brush to make this line a little different than that one. Now I'm going to just trace some of the waves. Not all of them, just some of them. Okay. Now I'm going to trace some of these dots. N not all of them. You find that uh, in, in nature, things aren't exactly perfect. They are perfect, but it's not what we think of as perfect. Nature is perfect. Perfect order, but not like what we think is perfect. We think if it's something that's like a machine, it's perfect. But that's not as beautiful. If everything's exactly the same, it's boring. Now we need some broad, I got a wider brush. I'm gonna draw some broad strokes on the wing. See, broad, this might be even too broad. Then do a couple strokes here. And that's that one. I'm gonna make the body of my butterfly a little darker. So I'm gonna put, uh, put some water in my brush and hopefully if I just make a few marks over here, it'll look a little bit darker. Yeah. Then I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, let's do another one. Another, we're going to do a different butterfly now. Get your 4B pencil. I'll wait till you finish yours. I'll wait for a minute. <clears throat> so, remember we are using shapes that we know. I'm going to put another but butterfly here or you can get another sheet of paper if you don't have uh, good, uh, enough room. But make sure your but butterfly is, is large, okay? So I'm going to, this to me, this is one of the simplest butterflies. That shape is simple. Now we're going to do one with, with four wings and it's going to, the butterfly is going to be a little bit more complex. So we're going to draw the body first this time. So first draw the body. That's an oval. That's the top part of the body. This time the bottom part of the body is going to be like a long triangle. Long skinny triangle. We're going to draw the head, but we're going not to we're not going to attach the head, leave a little space between the head and the body. So these are like designer, designer butterflies. These are more like butterfly designs. More, these are more abstract. Now we're going to draw the antenna. The antenna on this butterfly is not quite as long. Put the little dots at the end of the antenna. I left some space there. 
So the wings are going to be attached to the top part of the body. I'm just going to put a line across here, the center, so that you know where the wings are attached. All the wings are going to sort of lean in toward this center, okay? So we're going to do triangles on the right hand side. We're going to do triangles that's going to point back down to the body. Watch how I do my triangles. Triangle, remember three sides. So one is going to go up like this, however long you want your wings. The other side of the triangle is going to be like that. I'm going to curve the wing not make just a straight hard line. We're still sketching. We're not, when I say sketching, our lines are kind of light, they're not heavy. No, we don't press down on the paper. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side and try to draw a mirror image. You're going to make this side the same size wing as your right side, okay? so. If this line goes up like that, if this is, we're looking in the mirror, that line's going to go up like this. One way to make sure that it's the same size, you could put your, uh, the point of your pencil on the body, put your fingernail on where this triangle ends, and you can measure it. And so, on mine, this line would be here. Now, I can go ahead and draw this line. That's the, that's the easy way to do it. If you have an eraser, if you make, say I made my line, I don't need that line, I can just erase that. Again, this don't have to be perfectly the opposite of that one. This could be larger, a little larger or a little smaller. Now I'm gonna have a, a, a third wing that's going to go down like this. Remember the corners of your wings are Round it. So usually when we see butterflies, they have four sections in their wings. Now I'm going to do the same thing here on the right hand side. I don't have to measure now because I can see where this line is. Let's see where that line is. Now if you can get to this stage, now, at this stage, you can make changes. For instance, say I, I'm going to make this wing here a little smaller. So since I sketched, I can make it smaller. See how I rounded the corners? And then I can just erase what I don't need. So for me, this seems to be a little bit more balanced if I made that smaller. So when you sketch, you can do that. So now we have the sketch. Now we're going to paint. This time, let's use yellow. I'm probably going to use yellow. And that's all. That's the, that's the only color because I'm going to try something. I'm always up for experimenting. So I'm going to use my round brush. You may not have a large round brush. You can also use a flat brush. Matter of fact, a lot of you kids, I know you have a flat brush around this size. And um, so you can use that brush. I'll use this brush. So I'm going to paint my wings yellow. Okay, it don't have to be perfect. See how I left some white? Because we're not trying to make these perfect. They look more like designs if I'm not trying to make these like a perfect realistic sh butterfly shape. Now I'm going to get my small round brush, if I can find it. There it is. And I'm going to paint, I'm going to get 
we're going to use black again so I'm, I want gray so I mix my gray over here in the tray by adding water and I want I'm going to draw three lines inside of these wings or three or more lines like this I need more water that's too dark that I what I did but I'm going to leave it She's just making some lines, some strokes. Okay. Do you know what we're going to do next? Now we're going to just trace the figure, trace the butterfly's body and the wings. So first I'm going to do the antenna. Remember, you can't go too slow with your stroke. I want my, the body of the butterfly to be a, a dark gray. So I make mine too black for some reason. Now, do you kids see why I say don't use black? Black is so hard to control. For some reason, I'm heavy handed with my black today. Now I want the body to be dark but I don't want it to be too dark. Dark gray. And I'm, I'm, you're finding out that you're learning how to control the water paint. Watercolors are what we call unforgivable. And I'm, gonna, I'm telling you, painting watercolors first, you know, until you master the watercolors. That's what I did when I was in the 11th and 12th grade, though I was much older than you. I used uh, color pencils, you know, all those years from five years old until I got to the 12th grade, 11th grade. But then I started painting in watercolors in Miss Charlie Mae Hurt's class at Riverside High School. And what I found is that once you master watercolors, you can paint in any medium because you really have to, to control watercolors. And watercolors are so unruly sometimes, hard to, con to control. So it's okay, we are just learning. This is an art class, okay? So this is where it's okay to make mistakes. Now I'm going to trace the body. First I'm gonna trace the head using the tip of my brush, barely touching the paper. You don't have to draw every circle in every line. See, I'm, I, what I'm doing is I'm stopping and I'm making these marks like that, these curved marks. See, I'm stopping. I have a lot of water in my brush, but I'm using it. It's okay. If something happens that you like, then you just keep going. Now with the tip of my brush, I just want some dark paint, dark gray. I'm going to trace too much water in my brush now. See how it pooled? That means there was too much water. But I can still use it. See paint, you can move around. Did you notice what I did when that, when that pooled? I just moved the paint around, see that? And that's something that you, you do with oils and acrylics. Now, acrylics, to me, they are very unforgiving because they dry so fast. I want this part to be a little darker. Redraw some of these lines. You see how this is a, I call it a quick and dirty way to paint butterflies. And it look okay. It's a nice design. If you was making some sort of abstract arts Quasi abstract. I'm gonna repaint some lines in here. See, now I'm gonna. I guess I'll do this side of the body, and that's that one. We're going to do a few more butterflies, and on Thursday we're going to do a monarch, and we're going to make that that picture more realistic. So I'm gonna get another sheet of paper.
So now we know we have a basic, we have a basic way of doing these butterflies. Breaking them down into simple shapes. Let's do one similar to what we just did, but this one's going to be a little bit more colorful. So first, let's do, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the body. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> let's do the body of the butterfly, the top part. That's an oval. The bottom part of the body is going to be like an, another oval, but this time <coughs> it's not going to end in a point. Because we're doing different types of butterflies. So this oval is smaller than the bottom part. Now let's do a circle for the head. Antennas. <coughs> We're going to do, make some triangles again, similar to the last ones, similar to this one. But instead of letting the, this part of the triangle be flat, so flat, we're going to make it a little bit more round. We're going to round it some more, not just the corners. So the top wing, let's, let's go ahead and <coughs> draw a line in the, middle, in the center of the top part of the body. So the first wing we're going to draw is going to come out like that like a triangle, but this time we're going to round it. See that? And I'm making the, the triangle where this part of the wing is behind the top part. See that? How it slants back like that? I'm doing that on purpose. Now on the other side, we're going to do the same thing. It don't have to be exact an exact mirror image, but we still want to round it off. See how round I made it? I'm going to measure it just to see what the difference is. So I'm going to make this one come out a little bit more. That's good. You notice how I'm sketching. See, when you sketch, you can change things. Now the bottom wings are going to be wider. So first we'll do this, the one on the um, left hand side and round it off. See how it's wider than the top one? Sketch, because we're going to change these shapes like we did in the first one. We're going to do something similar <coughs> with the wings. See how we did these jagged shapes we're going to do the same on this butterfly. Now on the right hand side, draw that wing and make it wide. It's larger. The bottom wing is, is larger. I'm going to make this one a little larger here. And once you have that, you have the butterfly. <laughs> so now all we have to do is paint it. So I'm going to paint the wings first on this one. This time, let's paint the wings orange. Now my orange is a little dirty, so I'm gonna clean off my orange a little bit. Even though my paint, my water is black, I can still use it to clean. Usually we don't use black, so we never have black water. But today we're using black. So you can see where we really use black last when we do use black. Now I'm going to get my flat brush and dip it in the orange. And 
And let's just make some streaks of orange like this. Stay loose. See the streaks? I painted with the edge of my brush. We're gonna get a little bit more complex, just a little bit more complex with this one, not much more. Practice make perfect. So by painting all of these butterflies, you're going to get real good at it. I, I'm going to add some yellow to my wings. I could have done the yellow first. I suggest always paint with light colors first. But make sure your brush is clean before you dip it into the yellow. And I'm just going to go over the wing, the yellow, the entire wing. You can leave some white, it's okay. Because this is more like a design. You might see this, this design on a dress. Uh, you may like a, uh, a uh, commercial artist or uh, might just do a shirt full of large butterflies and, and they might do the prints like this. They may line up the prints and do it. Now we can use black. First, we're going to use gray. Thin the black paint with water so that it's gray. We're going to paint the head and the body. See, I put paint there. Now I'm just going to move it around. Now I'm picking some paint up with my brush. You can use your brush as a sponge. See what I'm doing? I'm going back and making it lighter by picking the paint up with my brush like a sponge. The brush hair is soaking up the water and then I, you know, dry it off in, on my towel. <clears throat> Now we're going to use black and we're going to trace our drawing. As usual, I'm going to do the antennas first. Now your painting is not going to look exactly like mine. I'm going to go ahead and, and paint the eyes on this one. See that? Those are the eyes. So I, I left, I didn't just draw a complete circle. I left uh, some areas so that you can see the, the dots for the eyes. Now I'm going to trace around. I'm only going to trace around the left hand side. And I'm leaving the right hand side for the most part. Less is more. So you don't have to draw each and every line all the time. As you begin to design and uh, become more creative with your art, you, you, you find out that you don't have to paint everything in. You can leave something understated. Is what, it's called leaving something understated. Now the, these little um, marks in the body, if you look at a butterfly closely, you see um, it has these little lines in it to show how the body, the body is divided or, or built. Now, I'm just gonna put a shadow on the left-hand side. Now, this butterfly is gonna have, well, let's, let's go ahead and trace the wings. Remember, in tracing the wings, you don't have to draw every line. We just want to know that the wing is there. Now, that line, to me, I made, it was too dark, but I can leave it. I'm not gonna try to fix it. For some reason, I'm painting really dark with my uh, black today. It's just one of those days. Now, when I get down here to the bottom of the wing, I'm going to just change the shape of the wing a little bit. I did the same thing up here, but I didn't tell you. <laughs> I forgot to tell you what I was doing. So I kind of let's let's do this side. I'm not going to sketch the whole entire thing. I'm just going to 
paint some wavy lines to change the shape. So it's kind of, uh, I've been searching for a word all evening. I can't think of it, the word. But when you paint this way, when you leave some things out, it makes it look a little bit more designer. I'll use that word. Still not the word I'm searching for. Can you think of the word I'm searching for, Iantha? Classic or what's the word? Uh, or, you know, like a Gucci bag. What would you call it? Uh, Some of you ladies, <laughs> yeah, it's luxurious more. This is, this, it's designer. We just use that word, it's designer. Now, I'm, th this butterfly is gonna have some dots, some spots. Okay, so that's that one. You notice I'm not using a hair dryer right now because a lot of you guys don't have one. <clears throat> Let's do another butterfly down here in the corner. We're doing butterflies today, all these different designs. So we have three designs. Let's go back to a design that's similar to the first one that we did. It's going to be a, a little different. So we're really going to accentuate, even though we're going to use this half circle shape, we're going to imply or indicate that this butterfly has four wings. So the first thing we're going to do is draw the body. On this one, we're going to draw the body, fat shape for the top part of the body. Then the bottom part of the body is like a long triangle. It's longer than the top parts. We're sketching. See, I have a lot of lines when I sketch. Circle for the head. antenna. Now th look at how we're going to do this. I just, I just want to find the shape of this butterfly. So this time we're going to draw a curved line. We're going to bend that line right here at the top of the butterfly's upper body. And it's going to go out to the length of the wings. And then it's going to, we're going to draw this half circle. Draw it lightly. Now this time we're going to divide this half circle into four parts. So we're going to have a line that curves around like this. Then it's going to curve back down like that. We're going to do the same on the right hand side, curves around, then curves down like this. So it's indicating, we're using the half circle, but now it's indicating that there are four wings. Now, some of you kids, this is, this is what you, this is a, a common mistake. You would draw your butterfly, you do this part really good, the body, in the head, you do that really good, you don't have no problem. But then when you draw the wings, you make the wings so small when you do that. <laughs> See the difference in this and that? So you want your wings to come out a lot more, like that. 
see the difference? Bring your wings out a lot more. Now it looks like it can fly. You want your butterfly to look like it can flap its wings and fly. So the wings are big. The wings are as long as the body. So if my body is this long, I'm putting my fingernail at the end of, of the body, then I measure the wings. Well, I should have made this one. I'm, I'm telling you what to do. I should have made this one a little bit larger. See how when you sketch, you can change things? I'm always changing things and creating things when I'm in my studio working. You're always making decisions. You don't have to change yours. It don't have to be too long. But uh, I'm always changing things, changing my mind, saying, well, that might look better if I do it this way, you know. But I think you get the idea. This time, let's use purple. But let's paint the body gray first. So we do it the same way we've been doing it. See if I can do it right this time. Okay. Finally learned how to not use too much uh, <laughs> paint. So we're going to uh, let's use a little red and purple. A little pink. Let's say pink. And then we're going to add the purple to it. It just gives it a little bit more depth. You don't have to do it this way. You can just use purple. That'll be fine. But I'm just going to Put a little pink on my brush and just in this area just put some light pink or, or red not too dark I want the paper to show through just add some little depth to your picture you know when you mix more than one color it adds something to your picture now I'm going to use the purple You notice I didn't color the entire wing? You don't have to color the entire wing because what happens is the white becomes a color too. So I'm putting the purple sort of at the end, but I'm leaving some white down there. Then this, I want you to, to see the pink, you see? And sort of sometimes it can add something to it when you have, you know, more than one color, not just the flat color, especially when you're painting in watercolors. Now we're going to get the skinny brush, the round. And you know the routine by now. We're going to trace the drawing. I'm going to give this one some eyes, too. Put the marks across the body. How the butterfly is made. Have those sections. I'm not a botanist, so I don't... I can't describe what they are. Now I just put too much black and I'm learning as I'm going. <laughs> like I hope you are. I'm just going to trace the body. Don't make it so perfect that it looks mechanical. trace the wings. I'm going to put some stripes, some lines like we did 
like we did with this one. And uh, I'm just going to use some gray, dark black or gray. Put some stripes. And some dots. Let's put some dots here. Hep has it. Like we say, we don't want it to look mechanical. I'm going to put some dots on the ends of the wings too. It's a certain type of butterfly that look this way. So remember, we're training our eyes. Every time we have an art class, we're training our eyes. We are, we are learning how to see so that we don't just look at things, we, we see them. And so by following me, <clears throat> you're training your eyes. You can always go back. You can always go back and look at this video and practice painting butterflies. Like I say, Thursday, what I want to do, and I hope I remember, <laughs> I have to remind me to do a realistic butterfly. I want to do a, a monarch butterfly. You know, that's the black and gold butterfly. I want to do that, uh, have him on a flower. And then if we have time, I'll do another one of him with his wings spread like this, the ones we're doing, but we'll make it look realistic. And uh, this is the first stage to making a realistic butterfly. Let's do another butterfly. And so I'm going to get another sheet of paper. I have another sheet here. I'm actually painting on 90 pound paper today. And I, I like how it's accepting the paint. So let's do one that's a little bit slightly different. We'll just do one. This one is going to be, uh, we may do two. We may have time to do two. Okay, so the one we're going to do now is going to be similar to this one, but we're going to make the uh, wings, we're really going to round off the wings this time, and the wings are going to go up more and down instead of almost straight across like we've been doing, or down like this one, the wing is going to go up more. <clears throat> so you will find that, you notice how we, we have so far four different types of, of butterflies. Okay. So, once again, let's, let's draw the body, the top part of the body, an oval, the bottom part of the body, a longer oval, long and skinny, a round circle for the head, and then some antennas. This time my antennas are going almost straight up. So this time we're going to do a triangle, and the triangle is going to go up. And we're going to round it, really round it this time. And do the same thing on the opposite side. Now, I'm not turning my paper, and it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's a great practice to try to keep your paper from moving so much. If I had to, if I was working flat, I would just turn my paper and do it like that, turn it upside down. But uh, it's a good practice to not turn your paper because when you start painting on canvas or, you know, Depending on what material you're using, you might n may not be able to turn it. You can also see it better this way. So I want the wings round. The bottom wing is going to come down. I'm going to let this top ring, uh, wing overlap this bottom wing. So I'll stop the line there. Make it round. 
do the same on the right hand side. I've never drawn so many butterflies. I've never done a butterfly class. This is my first. So you guys are helping me to expand. And I'm probably making my wings too small. Let's make them large, larger, much, make mine much larger. You see how when you sketch, you can do that? I don't even have to erase. I could paint over it and you won't even notice it that much. But I'm going to erase since we're drawing and sketching and we have an eraser. <laughs> so I'm going to erase. Now, <clears throat> if I had pressed down really hard with my line, I wouldn't even attempt to erase that. Now, watch what happens. Well, I did pretty good, but the line is still there. I want the line to dis basically disappear. I'm going to erase this. Okay, I can leave it looking sketchy. Oh, I found the word I was looking for, elegant. <clears throat> These type of paintings are more elegant. The simplicity in it makes it you know, perfect for design for fabric designs and things like that. Okay, so what are we going to do first? Let's go ahead and uh, use gray and this is going to be the last one. I'm going to have to speed this up. I'm talking too much. So first we're going to paint with gray. And once again, I'm using my paints are too dark right here. So I just move it around. I picked it up with my brush. That's what I did. Now I pat it off of my brush and pick it up. So I'm making streaks, streaks of gray. And then paint the body gray. See how easy that was and how quick that is. Clean your brush off and get red. We're going to paint almost at the tip of the, of, of the butterfly. We're going to put some red on the top wings, but leave some space, some white space there, just like that. Okay. Get your small brush. Now we're just going to trace like we've been doing the whole evening. Trace the body, put those lines there, put the lines here. I don't even have to trace this, the whole thing because we want it to look elegant. But this is what I want you to see. On the ends of the, the red, make some marks like that. See these hash marks close together. And then put some lines, draw a couple of lines there. Darker lines, black lines. And finish off by tracing around the wing. Remember, you can find us Splash Youth Arts Workshop dot org. If you want to give to our program, help us stay online and help us survive the pandemic. <laughs> also, you can go to YouTube and see this lesson. <clears throat> and we're going to save this lesson to Facebook as well. I'm going to darken this in. 
the tip of the wing. Let's just darken it in like that. Put your name on your paper and put your age. I'm not going to tell you my age. <laughs> it, this has been so much fun. We may have run over a couple of minutes, but I want you to know that I have really enjoyed painting butterflies with you. Hope to see you on Thursday uh, from 5 to 6. And uh, remember, art is for everyone. Bye-bye.